Today, we review the Team Associated SC5M. Let's get going. Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, I'm back, and today we're gonna do the review on my Team Associated SC5M. Let's go ahead, get this thing out of the box, we'll head over to the bench, and I'll take you through my car, then we'll get on with the review. Ever since I did that uh, video on the SC5M with Spencer Rifkin, tons of people have been asking for a review, and to be honest, I really wanted to just do some short course racing, so we've got an SC5M here. Let's go ahead, get this thing unboxed. Obviously, this thing comes sealed up like pretty much all kits do. A couple, a couple here on the edges, a couple on the bottom here. It looks like we got some tape on the edges. All right, that's that. Put the pocket knife away. And I guess let's crack this thing open and see what we got. Obviously, right off the rip, this thing comes with a pretty nice body. I'm pretty sure this is a Proline body. Let's see here. Yeah, it says Proline right on it, if you guys can see right there. It says Proline Flowtech. It's actually a pretty good looking body. Definitely better than the original body that came with the uh, SC10s. But uh, I'll have to get that painted up. I actually already got a JC body painted up. And it looks like here are the side guards for the Flowtech body and stuff like that. And man, there's a lot of empty air space in this box. Hmm. Okay, so obviously this thing's all, everything's packaged up here. Turnbuckles, ball cups. Man, all this stuff's really kind of packaged up a lot tighter than I thought it would be. So I really can't show you guys that much of it. I guess this really isn't going to be the most exciting unboxing. This is something that's actually pretty important. This is the new, these are the new associated, well I shouldn't say new, these are the same associated shocks that come with the thing, but these are new springs. These are, these are truck springs and just man, do they make a huge difference in the way my T5M handled. I mean, there was literally no comparison when running, these are whites and just running white buggy springs to white truck springs on my T5M was literally night and day. So I'm, I'm pretty thrilled that it comes with a truck. Okay, we have the uh, window masks and the aluminum hardware and plastic or nylon nuts to hold the uh, side panels onto the body. Good old sticker sheet. Now what we have here is the actual chassis itself. And this is obviously this thing ought to look familiar if you've ever built an associated or one of the new associated platforms. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out of the package. See that it's obviously aluminum, but it's got this nice like anodized coating on it or whatever. And then CVAs, slipper setup, and then of course the uh, transmission parts, you know, the uh, outdrives, idlers, diff parts, things like that. And then uh, manual, battery foam, antenna tube. And the last couple pieces in the box here are the uh, top shaft for the transmission and the aluminum camber link mount. So that's it. You know, I guess we'll take one second since it's kind of a bummer that they packed everything in this great big bag. I guess we'll take a quick second. And I'll rip this open so you guys can see what's in the big bag. So obviously it's packaged up pretty tight, but we'll do it anyways. Let's go ahead and just. All right, so now you guys get to see. So arms, bumpers, shock towers. Looks like the, uh, some heavy duty hinge pins, right? Turnbuckles, ball cups. I'm actually going to put Lunsford turnbuckles on this truck, but obviously it comes with the steel ones. Transmission case. Obviously the truck comes with a four gear transmission case. A lot of guys have put three gears in there, but it comes with the four gear. Plastic rear hubs work really good. They've been super durable. For a stock truck, I probably won't even put aluminum hubs on this thing. Transmission case, battery strap, all that kind of stuff. Shock mounts. I'll definitely put the aluminum shock mounts on just because they look a little bit prettier. And when you're servicing the vehicle, these tend to slide off sometimes. Aluminum motor plate, uh, the slipper clutch basket, spring, all that kind of stuff. Here we have, the, you know, obviously the majority of the plastics. You actually have like the battery cradle, the kick up, the top deck, all the bearings, you know, uh, front bulkheads, side guards, all that stuff. Comes with some inexpensive tools. Obviously you don't want to use these to build the kit, but you know, as a, as a last resort, or sometimes if you're in a really tight confined space, the little L wrenches don't hurt. Got the front bumper. Looks like there's some ball stud washers and all that kind of stuff. Front, uh, front brace and the front shock tower. Front arms, hubs, axles, all that stuff. And last but not least, the diff gear itself, the black grease and the actual diff lubricant. So that's it. That's what you get when you unbox the team associated. 
SC5M. Okay, here's my SC5M, and as you can see, I actually have the J Concepts Illusion High Flow Body. That was this body actually came off of my original SC10. You can see it has the original SC10 holes in here, and then I put new holes for the SC5M. I actually went out and I bought the new HF. Uh, this is the new High Flow version two, and you see it's a little bit more square. And it's already pre-marked for the actual SC5M body holes and stuff like that. But I just really liked the contours of the original high flow, the original Illusion body. So I decided to just go ahead and stick with that body for now. If you decide you want to try this body out. So this body is part number 0222. And the other body, the HF2, that's 0282. If you decide you want this body, just mount the, fir the front holes first. Drill the front holes. And then once everything's lined up, then you can just go ahead and mark it for the rear holes. Because obviously... This body was designed for the SC10, and uh, it doesn't have holes marked in the back for the SC5. But anyways, that's just the body. Let's go ahead and get the body off so that you guys can see uh, exactly what's going on underneath the hood. Okay, so here's my SC5M, and I'll go ahead and just run through what's in and on the truck right now. Basically, for the electronics package, this is a Savox 1258 titanium gear servo, an Airtronics receiver. This is an Orion stock ESC, Reedy. Uh, I want to say 4100 milliamp shorty battery and then a Reedy Mach uh, 2 7 turn mod motor and it's worked really really well. The truck is really really close to the way it came out of the box. I've made a few changes and basically here's what they are. I put Lunsford Tita Super Duty titanium turnbuckles on there just because I like the way they look. It really wasn't really wasn't for speed. But uh, I also have a titanium front axle which I can show you real quick. And those are really the two things I did for bling. And the only thing that's really been changed outside of a few settings and like, you know, camber link positions, the trucks come with white springs, the new associated white springs. But I can tell you that it tended to be a little soft and made the truck really want to oversteer. So I went out and I spent five bucks and I bought a gray spring. And what a huge difference. In fact, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this truck should have came with whites in the back and grays right out of the box. But, but that's what you have. And uh, that's, a, that's about it. That's what we have for, uh, for my own personal uh, SC5M. Okay, so we went ahead and we unboxed my SC5M. I took you through my truck. Now let's talk a little bit about the build. The first thing I want to say is I started watching some videos and talking to other people that already had the truck. And there's no question that there are some people that have had some struggles. There seems to be a few mistakes in the manual. Early on, it calls for like a 3 by 26 millimeter button head screw. But in the hardware sheet, there is no listing for that particular screw. Now that doesn't usually present a problem for the way I build. I pretty much cut a bag open, measure the screw with my caliper, and then I use it for its intended purpose. But there are definitely some people that kind of struggled with the labeling of the bags and stuff like that. So if you find that a little bit tricky, I would say cut your bag open, grab a scale or a caliper and just measure everything out. I want to say also in the rear bumper, I think it called for like maybe a three by 10 millimeter screw. And I think I had like a three by 12. What I normally do is I take like a 1.5 millimeter Allen head or like a 50 thousandths hex wrench and I put it in the hole and I just kind of set depth. I just want to make sure that that hole is deep enough for that screw to go in. And when I checked it, everything worked out. So my build actually went really well. I didn't have to ream the ball cups. I didn't have to do anything at all fit really well. I did end up drilling out my ball cups because I used a larger diameter turnbuckle. The stock turnbuckles are three millimeters and I used the Super Duty, uh, Lun the Lunsford Super Duty three and a half millimeter titanium turnbuckles. Not for any specific reason, not for performance or strength, but just because I like the way it looks. It was just a little bit of bling, but so, so that was my experience. There's, like I said, there's some mistakes in the manual. One thing I would like to address is that associated in one of the pages of the manual shows like this little set screw that's kind of like a pro tip or an option for the rear hub but it's not included. I think there's something that's that inexpensive. Maybe I'm being, maybe I'm nitpicking here, but like put your three cent screw in the kit so, and so it, it's not an option part. You know, if you want us to have it, just give it to us. If not, you know, why even bring it up when it's something so insignificant? Um, but that's it. So there's some mistakes in the manual. They didn't trip me up at all. My build still went flawlessly, um, which is which was refreshing. It was nice to, to build this kit and have it go so well. So, so that's it, that's it for the build. Let's move on. All right, let's talk performance. I have owned a bunch of short course trucks. I still have a couple of SC10s right now. And I will tell you that this truck really didn't disappoint in the performance category, though there were a few differences compared to some of the trucks I've owned previously. I guess let's start off with jumping and landing. I found jumping the truck to be just a little bit more challenging than I did with my SC10. 
I felt like with my SC10 I could control the attitude a little bit more and I felt like with this truck I needed to be a little bit more careful with my throttle control especially on bigger jumps you really want to fly the truck into the wind like a bullet it uh, when the nose comes up or if the nose kind of falls down it just doesn't seem to want to recover as good as my old SC10 but with that said this truck lands much much better than my SC10 did and who knows why it could be because there's new plastic in the arms the aluminum chassis the weight you know over the center of the truck with it being mid-motor who knows but uh, it jumps good a little tricky to uh, to fly perfectly but it lands amazingly and when it comes to the you know the next category like speed right or, or corner speed like cornering no question that with this being a mid-motor platform this truck carries more corner speed than my sc10 ever did and it really it's really more at home on today's medium to high grip surfaces for sure before i forget i wanted to mention that i talked to alan horn and his son austin austin actually beat me at the 2016 shytown town shootout where i debuted the truck and uh they had mentioned that they were using three gear transmissions and that they felt like the truck jumped a lot more consistently and it was a lot easier to jump with a three gear transmission so that's something that i'm definitely going to look into in the future and since we're already talking about three gear transmissions that ties right into acceleration and braking this truck was actually doing wheelies using proline electrons in uh, in illinois when i was there at the shootout and uh, so forward grip was definitely not an option. I do think that adding the three gear transmission will probably make braking just a little bit more consistent. Not that I had a problem braking the truck or slowing the truck down, but there were definitely a few corners where you were coming in really fast. And as you rolled into the brake, you could, it, you would just want, all, it's not that I had a problem with the truck being stable, but it's just that you want as much stability as you can possibly get when you're trying to slow this thing down, you know, into a, you know, from a high speed into a tight corner. So, so there you have jumping and landing. Corner speed was very good. Acceleration, obviously, it's doing wheelies uh, on pin tires at leisure hours for the 2016 Chi Town Shootout. I think I was one of the only trucks I saw doing wheelies. So, you know, that's that's good news. And braking. So that's it. That's what we have for performance. And let's keep going. When it comes to durability, there's no question that this latest generation, the fifth generation, if you will, of vehicles from Team Associated has been more durable than ever. I didn't really break my SC10 really all that often, but it, but there were times when you'd land it dirty and you'd snap off a front arm or you'd catch the, the corner of a pipe and break an arm, and it happened. But I can honestly tell you that I've beat this thing up, I've run my friends off the track, I've goofed off, we've done some big monster jumps going backwards on the tracks and stuff like that, and it hasn't broken. And I think they're just, I think this newest generation of vehicles, I think the durability is just absolutely amazing. And so uh, I would have to just say durability on this particular kit is very, very good. In fact, I'll tell you on some of my, I have two different B5Ms and I have yet to break an arm on either B5M. They're actually starting to wear out and get sloppy and beat up and nicked just from, you know, crashes and stuff like that, but they still aren't broke. So I think it's hard to argue with the fact that the durability uh, on the, this, these new kits is, is really good. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the aftermarket. The aftermarket for the SC5M and all of the fifth generation vehicles over there at Team Associated is just absolutely huge. This right here, this is a, a, a custom chassis that's lightweight and it flexes a little differently than the stock one. This is actually made by Sticky Licks RC. And this is just one product uh, of many from a ton of different aftermarket companies. J Concepts, Proline, my company Rawspeed, we're gonna be making stuff for this, Exotech, there, the, the, the list of companies and the list of products just goes on and on for these aftermarket vehicles. You saw earlier, you saw that I actually prefer the J Concepts Illusion High Flow Body part number 0222. That's just my particular favorite. Of course, they also have this body here. This is the uh, HF2. This is the body you'd see Spencer Rivkin running, and it's actually designed specifically for the SC5M. It's got pre, uh, you know, dimples in the back for the SC5M, but... I think when it comes to aftermarket support, I think that you'll find that the associated vehicles are probably the most well-supported line or current lineup of vehicles that there is. And it's pretty simple. I think that aftermarket manufacturers, they're looking to make money. And so they look for the most popular kits. And because of associated's, uh, you know, their, their distribution network and channels and, and releasing new products, they just have a really popular vehicle. So uh, that's about it. If you're if you're one of those guys and it's important to you to know that there's a solid aftermarket, just know that for a lot of these products, including the SC5M, there's a very solid aftermarket. Okay, let's talk a little bit about value. You know, this truck will run you about 309 bucks at your local hobby shop, somewhere in around there, right? That's what I see it for on the internet. 
And I think for three hundred nine bucks, it's a pretty good value. But if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know that I really feel like there's two sides to value. There's really what you get in the box, the metal and the plastic, and then there's like the the global experience slash support, you know, parts availability stuff like that that the manufacturer provides. I think that on this side with the parts and the parts support and the driver support and setup sheets, I don't really think there's a company out there that probably does it better than Associated. There are other companies that are doing a good job out there, but I don't think anybody probably does it better than Associated. And uh, I don't know exactly why that is, but my guess is they've just been around 30 years and they're serious about racing and winning championships and that's why that's there. Now, when you get to what's actually in the box, the metal and plastic, I think that you get a good value. There, there are probably a lot of guys out there like me that wish there was a factory team version that came with the aluminum hexes, that came with titanium turnbuckles so we didn't have to put that stuff on aftermarket, like that type of thing. But with that said, I still think what you get in the box is a pretty good deal. I mean, you get, you know, obviously compared to like an old SC10, you're getting an aluminum chassis. The car's mid motor now and stuff like that. You know, it has uh, it has hubs that have adjustable positions up and down and stuff like that. But I would say the value is good in the box, but it's not great. I think that if they would have probably just put just put aluminum hexes in the back of the truck, and I would have said great. I think it's good, but aluminum hexes would have made it great. Obviously, it's got the metal axles up front, so you don't really need to worry about that. But in the back, if it would have had an aluminum hex, there's nothing more of a pain in the butt to me than when I'm changing tires and I pull the tire off and the hex is stuck in the wheel. I hate that. But uh, overall, I thought the value is very good. What's, you know, it's very, very good in the box, and it's hard to argue with the fact that Associated has such a great big you know, dealer network, parts distribution, you know, support systems online with their setup sheets and stuff like that. So overall value, very good. All right, let's talk conclusion. We did the unboxing. I showed you my personal vehicle. We talked about performance and durability and jumping and value and all this kind of stuff. What's the, what's the long story short? Is the truck worth the money? It is, it is worth the money. You know, short course is kind of near and dear to me because it's really how I found my way back into racing in the hobby and I still have a blast racing it even today. I know that it's kind of died down a little bit, but this closed wheel racing is more scale realistic than anything else we're currently racing. And it really gives us the chance to go out and trade paint with our friends. Unfortunately, it's kind of gotten a bad rap because a lot of the newer guys, they don't trade paint the fairway, right? They just plow right through the back of you. But, but overall, short course has been a really fun class to race and I hope it really isn't going anywhere. I think that Associated has released a good product with the SC5M, I think they have good value. I think out of the box, the truck is really close. Like I said earlier, definitely go out and at least at the very least, go buy yourself a gray front spring. I think that white spring is just a little bit too aggressive, but uh, I would say definitely spend the five bucks, get the gray front spring, and you're, the truck's gonna be pretty darn close right out of the gate. So overall, it's a good product. It handles well, performs well. Maybe isn't quite as easy to jump, or at least in my opinion, it doesn't seem quite as easy to jump as my original SC10, but I'm gonna throw a three gear transmission in this truck and see if it, see if it makes it any easier. But overall, I've, I've had a good time. It's been a good review. I actually took this truck to Chicago to the Chi-Town Shootout, the 2016 Chi-Town Shootout for the first time I ever raced it. I actually hadn't raced it even here at home. And I finished fourth in my short course behind guys like Brad Shearer and Chad Dew. So overall, I was really impressed with it. It's been a good kit right out of the box. Like I said earlier, my build went well. Really don't have any complaints. I guess if I did have a complaint, I would say uh, I wish it would have came with aluminum hexes in the rear and that's really about it. So. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. One last thing before I let you guys go and see the running footage. I totally got caught slipping when I was at the 2016 Chi-Town shootout and I didn't take any video footage. Lucky for me, my little buddies that came to see me, Ryan and Ireland, they actually shot some video of me running. So I wanna say thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ireland. I'm stoked that you guys shot this footage and I'm stoked that you came to see me. So everybody, this is my SC5M racing on the track at the 2016 in Chi-Town Shootout, courtesy of Ryan and Ireland. And they also have a YouTube channel. I think it's called RC10CNC. I'll try to put a link down in the description. Here we go.
Hey, by the way, before you leave, I just want to say thanks again for watching my videos. I only make these videos so that we can have fun together. You'd be doing me a big favor if you could either comment, like, or even better, subscribe to my channel. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.